It's been a weird morning. I am sitting in a Rivian. I am sitting in my Rivian. Let's do this. No joke, first drive in a Rivian. A few moments later. In two miles, you take exit. Holy shit! <laughs> Okie dokie, time for a 24 hour review of the Rivian R1T dual motor performance Max Pack. The, the much maligned Max Pack. I'm gonna have to do some videos on the pros and cons of the Max Packs. I feel like a lot of the uh, chatter out there on the internet. Feet. Turn left onto Georgetown Lane. It's kind of hyperventilating. Um, you know, I, I think people are kind of missing the point a lot. Uh, but anyway, we'll get to that in a different video. Uh, literally, it's been 24 hours since I got this. Uh, I've put like, I don't know, 30 miles on it or something like that. Turn left um, onto Georgetown Lane. Okay, you. Enter. And, uh, God, my first complaint is that turn signal sound. I gotta say, but let, let me, it's really tempting to like go into nitpicky things because it is so freaking good. Um, it is, it, it handles beautifully. It has prodigious performance and power. Um, visibility is fantastic. Um, I've never had a pickup truck before. This is my first pickup truck in my life. I'm 49 years old. Uh, first pickup truck and first American car, actually. And I love, I, like, instead of being a dark cave of an SUV behind me, or a swoopy sports car, or coupe, or whatever, right? You know, um, those are the kind of cars I've driven, and so this is my first time pickup truck. And the glass right back there, yeah, I've got, like, great visibility. The B-pillar is kind of right here, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. So, you know, yeah. Power. Let's see if I can throw the GoPro. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so power is, is insanely good. Like, ridiculously insanely good. Um, the fact that a 7,000 pound beast like this can have 410 miles of range out of the box and can do zero to 60 in like three and a half seconds. One pedal driving is being a little bit of a challenge to get used to. Um, I've never really had extended time in a vehicle like this. Uh, I have driven my brother's Tesla, so I have had some road time. Actually, what kind of gets me isn't like driving down the road or driving down the highway. It's like slow speed stuff in, the, in a parking lot, like backing up. I'm used to having a creep and then have my foot on the brake pedal. And so if for some reason something happens, I can stomp on the brake pedal in a moment's notice, no problem. Um, of course, you can't do that. It doesn't creep. And so uh, you put reverse and you want to bet that reverse a little bit and you're pressing the go pedal. And it feels weird. Uh, I'll get used to it, I'm sure, but it feels weird. Um, you know, this interior space is fantastic. You know, all the storage space is fantastic. Um, the somewhat unknown state of the tonneau covers right now, currently as of late November, 2023, is a little annoying. Uh, Rivian is still working on both the manual cover uh, that's coming soon, as well as the automated cover, which is also coming soon. They were both supposed to be out in the summer and it is well past that. And so I would really like to have something. That being said, I am super crazy, happy, delighted, and um, it's been, it's been freaking awesome. You know, little nitpicks, let's go ahead and throw some in. So again, the turn signal sound, you know, that could be as simple as a software update, right? To, uh, to allow people to customize their, uh, uh, their turn signal sounds. Um, uh, what else? Um, the door pockets on the front doors, they're quite deep and the elastic, at least on this new truck, isn't very soft and so it doesn't really come out easily and so reaching in to get things out of the door pocket down here is actually kind of challenging especially with my left hand um, with my watch and trying to pinch in between the seat and the upper part of the door card and then getting in underneath into the door pocket is kind of challenging and why is there no glove box like what the frick is that uh, I mean I knew I knew it had no glove box I know I bought it knowing this you know I, I I have no com true complaints about it, but it's like something that people notice, like my wife, and she's like, WTF. Um, that and the turn signal sound, she was like, I cannot tolerate that. Um, so anyway, the camp speaker, I guess is kind of cute, but at least for me, I'm not 
when I go camping, I want the sounds and silence of nature. I don't want to bring a speaker. What would be really cool is if somebody made a camp battery, right? Screw the speaker, Include, keep the lantern part, maybe make it a little brighter, um, and also include as much capacity for a camp battery as possible and have a whole bunch of USB ports on it and that kind of stuff and have a camp battery that tucks in there with, I don't know, 500 watts of power or however much you can pack into that kind of size space. That would be really cool. Um, and it would just auto charge off of there. That would be, that'd be super cool. Not having Android Auto is pretty lame um, or Apple CarPlay for that matter. You know, I'll bet, I'll bet you 20 bucks that Amazon is paying Rivian to require Alexa and not support Android Auto oh, and- Sorry, um, I don't know that. Oh, shh. Uh, I, I presume they're paying them. Um, so great, but I hope that agreement expires much like Amazon's um, exclusive access to Rivian's delivery trucks. Um, I hope that goes away eventually because it would be very nice to, uh, to have my Google Maps function properly. In fact, literally yesterday, I'm like taking my coworkers to lunch and we searched for a restaurant, uh, a chain of restaurants called Hobie's here in Silicon Valley. And uh, of course it was completely out of date and took us to one that didn't exist anymore. And we knew this and we double checked it. And you know, on Google Maps, it was like, oh yeah, it's been closed for like a year. This is stupid. So I don't know where Rivian gets their map data. And um, it's just, I mean, the whole infotainment system is fine, but that is one thing that's definitely missing is that Android Auto integration. That would really, really be nice. One thing that's definitely very nice compared to my Volvo is that, you know, my XC60 was a plug-in hybrid with like 15 miles of range. That was enough range to go from home to work and back again on a daily basis. Um, but when I do that and stay on electric mode only, it only has 90 horsepower of electric power, right? So you could, you know, on little errands, right? I could feel good about saving power and not using any gas and saving heat cycles on the gasoline engine and taking care of it and taking care of the planet, all that good stuff. But 90 horsepower is not a lot of power. Uh, I used to have a Golf diesel 1999, I think, Golf Diesel, which had 90 horsepower. Um, my Volvo XC60 weighed a frick ton more than that Golf. Uh, so there was kind of a, a driving enjoyment pleasure that was definitely missing in the S XC60 as far as a daily basis pleasure of driving kind of thing. Um, whereas this thing, of course, has as much power as I want whenever I want. Um, you know, so it's, uh, I can really kind of feel like I can use it. Whereas the XC60, sure it had 400 horsepower, but did I use it that often? Well, not, not as much as, uh, not as much as really I wish I could have. That being said, one thing I definitely miss about my XC60 is it had a heads up display. And so, um, this does not, I mean, sure on the dashboard here, um, there is the speed limit, 35 miles an hour right here, as well as my speed and all of the extra other stuff and whatever. Um, but, you know, I'm used to seeing the speed limit, my current speed and speed limit up here on the dash. And it's just, I don't know, it's just taking me some time to retrain my eyes and expectations, right? Um, that'll happen before long. But at the moment, um, it's a little discombobulating. Also discombobulating is, of course, again, one pedal driving, low speed maneuvers, um, you know, coming to a stop at a red light and just taking my foot off the gas. And, uh, you know, it says hold, it says brake hold on the dash. I know it's not going anywhere. It's just weird. Just, just kind of funny. Um, anyway, love the interior, love the seats, They're nice and comfy. Love the heated seats. Um, the open grain wood in the dash. It is a very, very nice place to be. I cannot wait to uh, go on road trips in this thing. Um, we're already planning a bunch for next year, so that should be uh, that should be awesome. One of the things I also want to do is head down to Hollister Hills. That's just down the street from me. That's what every everybody's been freaking out over the past week or two after that cyber truck went up, you know, doing some sort of either test or tuning of its uh, trash control systems. And then a Rivian went up a quad motor uh, and then an F-150 went up that that's uh, concrete stair steps section of Hollister Hills. So what the frick, you know, why not go down and try out the dual motor and see how that does on it. So that'll be in a video coming soon. But 
think that is kind of most of my impressions of, uh, of the vehicle for the first 24 hours. Perhaps most importantly, it does actually fit in the garage. Um, unfortunately, my rooftop tent that many of you have seen on my channel uh, that we had on top of the XC60 doesn't really fit on top of this properly. Um, it's just too long for the cab or too long for the bed. Um, and if you try to just go up and split between the two, you're gonna block the shark fin. Um, and the shark fin, of course, is where we get all the satellite coverage and data and et cetera for the vehicle. And since we don't have Android Auto, I've got to rely on the vehicle for navigation. Now, don't die. <sighs> anyway, um, so already kind of planning out, probably selling that and switching to a different one that will fit on top of the bed and the back of the truck. Um, but yeah, we're already kind of plotting out, you know, where will things fit for ski season is just around the corner. So we're gonna have a bunch of uh, mountain driving up to Tahoe uh, in January, February, March, and then um, planning out some cool stuff beyond that as well. So should be a damn fun 2024. If you like content like this, if you wanna hear more about the dual motor uh, Rivian and see how it works when we push it towards the limits, uh, as well as the Max Pack and kind of uh, seeing how that works out for road trips and other experiences, et cetera. You know, just first thing for fun, right? I set my vehicle to charge to 70% last night. It did so, and that was 260 miles of range with the off-road tire package that I have on this vehicle. Um, it's nice to have 260 miles of range. If I didn't have the Max Pack, that would be, uh, geez, it would be probably closer to 220-ish or something like that. Um, which would be unfortunate. If I had the standard pack, uh, it would be probably under 200, which is not much. Um, I know, do you need 200 miles every day? No, I need like 15. But A, you buy a vehicle for the extents of things you plan to use it for. And also, you know, disasters do happen. Like in, in, in my garage, I've got two big five gallon jerry cans with fuel and stabilizer in it for, you know, in case there's a huge earthquake or something like that, as well as other disaster preparedness kind of things. You know, having a vehicle that can only get you to work and back and can't get you out of town in case there's a zombie apocalypse, well, that'll suit you just fine 99% of the time. Anyway, now I'm rambling almost to work. Um, please like, please subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. If you want to hear more about our crazy adventures, um, stay tuned.